Okay, this lesson, the quotient rule. You could almost feel it coming when the last one was called the product rule. You knew what was coming, the quotient rule. And this is another one that as it's developing, if you see functions that you look at and go, well, maybe there's another easier way to do it. Do this homework as quotient rule. And we'll tie all the rules together a little later, okay? In the next chapter. This chapter just has product and quotient. And then we'll look at something called chain rule in the, in the next chapter. So does this title remind you of anything? Well, of course it does. We just did the product rule. Now we're doing the quotient rule, the matching one. And here's a reminder on the product rule. The derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. I, I stole this phrasing of it. Some people like this phrasing better, you know, because it's like first, first, you know. So you don't have to change it if you don't want to. But the phrasing is just slightly different here. It says derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. If you look online and, and uh, in some textbooks, they always uh, phrase it that way instead. Same thing. In another form, f prime g plus fg prime. The product rule is convenient for functions that were the product of two functions of which we knew how to take the derivative, but were too difficult or impossible to reduce to regular polynomial functions. Well, some of the ones we saw, actually it wouldn't have been that bad to reduce them and multiply them out. But we practiced them all as product rule once. So now we will look at functions that are the quotient of two functions, which we know how to take the derivative of. For these functions, we can differentiate using the quotient rule. Ooh, a little spelling mistake there. Let me just get out my white pen there and fix my quotient rule. Yeah, there, there we go. Back here. Uh, which states? Uh, okay, there's, it's stated three different ways here. If the first two completely confuse you, wait to the third one. The third one's not as bad. Um, this is a nice way to remember it. If you've got two functions and they're divided, then you do f prime g minus g prime f over g squared. Once you get good at it, you'll like this one because it's easier to say and remember, okay? This, okay, so this d by dx stuff, it's coming up and it really matters. There's a day where it's like, oh, and it's coming up like next week where all of a sudden it's like d by dx. Oh, it's nice to think about it as d by dx, not just prime. And right now you're like, I don't know what you're talking about. I have no idea what you're doing, and this d by dx confuses me. It's so important, and we will get to it. So right now we just sort of tiptoe in it. Whenever we can mention it, and I know there's some homework questions in, in your last section that said, oh, find d by dx. They're just throwing it in there, making sure you know this just means derivative at this point. It seems like, oh, you're just trying to confuse us, give us weird symbols to represent the same things, and that is not true at all. This is going somewhere. So right now we just sort of throw it out there to get you used to it. And it would be d by dx of f times g, minus d by dx of g times f over gx squared. Some people are like, I really like those. I really understand those. And if you don't, well, you don't need them at all. You can get through this whole chapter without ever thinking like that at all. This is the one when you're first learning about quotient rule that most people think about when they're doing these questions. The derivative of the top times the bottom minus, ooh, minus, the derivative of the bottom times the top all over the bottom squared, and I'll prove this in a later lesson. The proof is not completely insane. It's sort of insane, but not completely insane. Well, like product rule, that seemed a little mysterious as I was explaining it, but then once I do the examples, you go, okay, well, I can handle that. Yeah, quotient rules like that too. Well, let's jump right in and do some quotient rule questions. Differentiate each of the following. The nice thing about quotient rule is, because it's derivatives of tops and bottoms, I don't need my little squiggles to keep track of things. I know what the top and the bottom is. I don't need anyone, any special squiggles to keep track of everything. So very slowly here the first time. Quotient rule says, derivative of the top Okay, so far? My job, do it slow enough that you're like, each individual piece of quotient rule isn't too bad. Derivative the top times the bottom, so the bottom stays the same. When we say times bottom, we mean don't do anything with it. Just times what you see in the bottom. Here's the what mistake you'll make. If you've done a bunch of product rule questions, and then you go to do quotient rule questions, you'll forget that it's minus, but I don't know, maybe I'm old. Maybe that's why the minus makes perfect sense to me. If product rule was plus, quotient rule would be minus. Somehow, you know, we've, we've changed operations here. It sort of makes sense to me. And the reason I say it like that is so maybe it'll help you remember too, that quotient rule has a minus. 
and you'll find you're repeating the rules over and over in your head as you're doing these questions. You're like, okay, I wrote the minus, now I gotta think again. True to the top times the bottom minus true to the bottom times the top. And we say times the top, we mean don't do anything with the top. Just write it down again. All over the bottom squared. And when we say over the bottom squared, not, not derivative of the bottom squared, just take the bottom and literally square it. Now I'm going to try and jump off what I was saying in the previous lesson about product rule. What is it about the numerator that tells me I have to multiply out these brackets? It's got to subtract between. See, factored would be a bunch of things multiplied together. The denominator we like. Don't touch the denominator. It's nicely factored. It's ready to go. If we had to find out when this thing doesn't exist, and we're heading there, if we had to figure out where this doesn't exist, the denominator's all ready. X can't equal one third. Boom, done. Yeah? But the numerator needs some work to be able to do that. And that work is the same algebra you did for product rule, except with a minus in there. So you got to watch out for the minus. So what do I get here? 6x minus 2 minus 6x minus 5 all over 3x minus 1 squared. Let me just make sure I haven't made a mistake there, because I, I don't know about you. My brain's like that. And we saw in the last lesson one time where I was like, all of a sudden I just make a mistake in the middle of of doing this. So I check this, this step here. 6x minus 2 minus 6x. Oh, there it is. Minus 15. Happens to me all the time. And when it ha happens to you, you forget those little things. Don't get frustrated. That's what, exactly what this stuff is about, is checking and rechecking. And then I'm going to collect up like terms. I get y prime equals negative 17 over 3x minus 1 squared. Quotient rule is famous for this. It's famous for looking kind of complicated in the results you get, and then all of a sudden it's not. It tidies up nice. It doesn't always do it, but it often does it. So don't freak out when it does it. It's not, surpri it's, it's not surprising with quotient rule that things tidied up nicely here. So we always want to leave the denominator squared? The denominator is just nice the way it is. Instead of saying squared, I'm going to say nicely factored. Okay. Yeah, you're right. It's squared. But uh, really what we want to get to is things that are factored. Yeah, as we move forward and we set this thing. Well, the two things that are going to happen next is they're either going to tell me an x value to sub in, and this is nice, ready to be subbed in x values, or they're going to tell me a y prime they want, a slope of a tangent they want, and I'll put something over here. And in factored form will be nice and ready to do things with. So factored form is the one we want. But this wasn't factored form up here on the first line because it had subtract, not multiply. And again, from there you could go and say, okay, find the slope of the tangent when x equals 4. Okay, sub in x equals 4. Find out when the slope of the tangent is 34. You put a 34 over there and you solve. So you can do all those same things you were doing with slope of tangent. This is just a different rule to get to that y prime equation. Are there any questions there? I tried to pick the first one as the easiest one ever so you got the feel for what this thing does. More time on that one? What do I got? One more, two more. That's all. Two more. Does it? So it's all, this is all about practice. I show you and go, okay, I sort of get it. Now we'll, now we'll practice it out. Very slowly. I want to do each step so you go, I get that step. And then your practice is about tying all the steps together. Quotient rule says derivative of the top. You see why Friday's homework was so important. If that's mysterious to you, then, huh, well, start with Friday's homework. Go and do that first, then come back and start looking at these. Because we're, we're hopefully at the point where you can easily look at a numerator like that and go, okay, bring down the exponent, reduce the exponent by 1, and negative 3, the, the derivative of negative 3 is 0. But as you're doing these, again, it'll always be like that in a quotient rule. When you're first learning, you go, okay, I did that. Now slow it down. What, where was I? Drew the top times the bottom. And when we say times the bottom, we mean don't do anything to the bottom. Just keep it as it is. Then what? Yeah, do to the bottom. But what, 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 what operation in between here? Subtraction, yeah. That, that, that will come up. You'll get going so fast. Your mind will wander. You'll be thinking about other things. Oh, what am I going to have for dinner? Oh, I got chem homework tonight. All those kind of things. And you'll write add there because you just did a whole bunch of homework where it was add every time. But with quotient rule, it subtracts. So, derivative of the top times the bottom minus derivative of the bottom, 8x, times the top. And when we say times the top, we mean don't do anything to the top. 
Just keep it right like that, and then over the bottom squared. And like Luke said, I won't make a rule here, but I'll say most times you never do anything else to the denominator. You just square it and you just leave it there. And again, this will be the big decision. Should I multiply out the brackets? And what is it about this question, or what is it about this numerator that tells you, yes, you're going to have to multiply that stuff out? The operation of subtraction. The operation of subtraction. Factored form is multiplied or divided. We're, we're happy with multiplied or divided. But with that subtract between, you're going to have to do some work here. And so multiply out the brackets. Try to focus because it's easy to make a mistake here. And you saw me do it in the last one. 3x squared plus 12x fourth minus 8x fourth plus 24x. See me, I check, I check it every time. Yeah? 30 whatever years later, and every time I, done, I look and I check to make sure I didn't make a mistake there. Don't do anything with the denominator. Usually. Usually. You're like, well, well what's not usually? How will I know? You'll know. When we get to them, you'll know that there's something to do with the denominator. Don't, don't worry about that. Usually we don't do anything with the denominator. And then so one, maybe two more steps, depends on how this works out. How many x to the fourth did I have? 4x to the fourth plus 3x squared plus 24x. And this is a little bit of a mystery. Should we factor the numerator? And I say, well, it really depends on what you're going to do next. If they just say sub in x equals 5, why would you factor this thing? You know, it's easier to sub in 5, not factor it, I think. If they're like, oh no, find out when y prime equals 0, well then, yes, you're going to want to factor it. So I'll show the factored form. But maybe some more wisdom is coming about when to factor and when not to. I was definitely talking to someone in the first period there that was doing some work on product rule, and we decided together that there was a question that maybe factoring it all out or multiplying it out wasn't the best move. Maybe just subbing right in is the, mo is, is the move. If this, right there, maybe right there, if they said sub in x equals 1, there's a good place to sub in x equals 1. So you don't have to factor just because we've always been factoring. We gotta, so we're going to work on that. We're going to work on when to do that. I believe tomorrow's lesson is just finding derivatives in certain situations and so on. So when we do those word problems, you get used to when should I factor and when shouldn't I factor. Did I factor this right, by the way? 4x fourth, 3x squared, 24x? Yeah, I think I did. Any questions there? Do you need more time? Who needs more time? Are we good? I'm not trying to rush it. It's a pretty quick lesson as is. I think there's one more to go, is there? Oh, yeah. All right, I got to tell you, if you ran into this thing, on the test, I would multiply out the denominator. I wouldn't play around trying to do product rule inside a quotient rule when there's an easy multiply out the brackets to do there. So the only reason I'm not going to do that is because I'm getting ready for tougher questions. Yeah, I'm getting ready for monsters that might come along a little later. So I'm going to try and do this as a product rule, sorry, as a quotient rule with a product rule inside, just to sort of tiptoe up on these tougher derivatives that are going to come up. Very slowly, very slowly, very slowly. Derivative of the top. So far, so good, right? Derivative of the top times the bottom. And the bottom is all that stuff in the bottom. Life is good so far. Now, Derivative of the top times the bottom. Minus, minus, minus for quotient rule. Now derivative of the bottom. This is tough to do. Just stare at that bottom for a second, and that's just a product rule question. We just did a product rule question. So you got to really let your brain focus on that, and you, whether you get a highlighter out or something like that, say, just forget everything else for a second. Stop thinking about Netflix, or whether I can write this test on Friday, or whether... I'm ready for Christmas. Stop all that and just go, okay, that derivative is pretty straightforward. We just did a bunch of those. Derivative of the first times the second plus derivative of the second times the first. And just savor that for a minute. Hesitate and go, there, and I'm going to highlight that as well. That is that derivative. 
If you're confused, wait till you hear what I say next. I'm going to say something to try and help organize all this. And I'll, actually, all I'm going to say is I'm going to repeat the, pro, the quotient rule. Drew to the top, good, times the bottom, minus drew to the bottom, which happened to be a product rule, not a tough product rule. Drew to the first times the second, plus drew to the second times the first. So what goes here? Let me say it again. Drew to the top times the bottom, minus drew to the bottom, times the top. Okay, so that's just warm up for tougher ones. All over the bottom squared. The good news is when you square the bottom with multiple things in there, you just square the individual pieces. Then there's a bunch of work to do. I just focused on this. It was a product, and I said, okay, derivative of the first times the second plus derivative of the second times the first. That's, uh, so that's why I highlighted those as go, there's a question from last lesson's homework. That particular part of it. Should we simplify that? Oh, yeah, lots of simplification here to do. And I'll do those lines fairly quickly, but then you can ask me questions about it. I did forget something on this line, though. Did you see I didn't write y prime out here? I got so excited about my product rule inside a quotient rule that I forgot to put y prime out there. Okay, so now a bunch of algebra. You know, calculus is over. Just keep establishing that, that the calculus part of this is already done. That's calculus. Through the top times the bottom, must through the bottom times the top, all the bottom squared. Good. Now this is just algebra that we've been beating you to death with for years to get you ready for this moment where you could follow the, what happens next. Okay, so here I go. Here's how I handle it. I always do these kind of brackets. First, and I multiply by monomials at the end. That's me personally. I think the square bracket is pretty nice. I get 2x minus 1, I think. Let me just double check that. An x from there and an x from there is 2x. A negative 3 and a positive 2 is a negative 1. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. And then I could collect up like terms in that first bracket. I could do it. I just decide for myself. And maybe, maybe you don't even need that. Maybe you collect like terms as you go there. I don't know. It depends on you and how, how you handle these algebra. Me, it's only one extra term. I'm going to go ahead and now multiply out everything across. Same thing. Okay. Yeah, it would be the same thing. Uh, let, me, let me go over here and go. Let's just talk about, say, 5 times 2 all squared, making actual numbers. What I get is 5 times 2 times another 5 times 2. And so what re I really have here is 5 squared and 2 squared. So I'm just keeping those things together because they're, they're all just squared. Okay, multiply out that first bracket. And if you've got different steps in mind for how you would handle this, as long as we end up with the same answer, we're okay. And there is one tricky moment in that line. I'm going to double check everything else and then hesitate there because there was a tricky moment in there that might confuse you. 2x cubed minus 6x squared plus 4x squared minus 12x, yes. Negative 2x cubed and then positive x squared. It's right. It's a positive, but it doesn't look like it should be positive. Where did this positive come from? Well, let's talk about the other one first. 2x times x squared is 2x cubed, but there's a negative out front. So that's negative 2x cubed. Negative 1 times x squared is negative 1x squared, but there's a negative out front is positive x squared. You might be like, I'm going to do that in two steps. You know, it's all fine and good that you just zipped past it in one step, but that seems like a two-step thing for me. And you might look at another part of my algebra and go, no, I can do that in one step. You did it in two steps. Yeah, algebra is like that all the time. You know, so just get your own style about what you can handle. Potentially one more step in tidying. I don't know how this plays out, but how many cubes do we get? All the cubes go. This happens in quotient rule a lot. I wanted to use my cancel color there of orange. A lot of times in quotient rule, when you actually tidy up the numerator, good things happen. Doesn't always happen, but lots of times it does. Uh, x squareds. How many x squares do we end up with here? 
negative 6 plus 2 is negative 2 plus 1 is negative x squared and then minus 12x. I'm just going to check that because it's so easy to make a little mistake. The x cubes went and then I got negative 6 plus 4 is negative 2 plus 1 is negative x squared minus 12x. And I could go one more nice step here. Look how good this looks when I common factor out the negative x. Just imagine. You won't have to imagine much longer. Just imagine if they then said, oh, when is this derivative of 0? Oh, that's 0 and negative 2. When does this derivative not exist? Negative 2 and positive 3? You know, like, there's lots of good things we're going to be able to do very soon by leaving them in factored form. So I'm trying, trying to go back and forth here. Go, is it a good time to factor? Is it a good time not to factor? You know? Do you have any questions about that example? There's some wild algebra in there that you might do faster than me, certain parts. You might show extra steps in other parts. All right, well, we say it all the time, but do this homework. This stuff's all about practice. It's actually not that complicated, but the practice is what's going to make the difference on those little mistakes that I know drive you nuts.